I'm not persuaded by that, particularly since we know there was a nasty epoch, the Younger Dryas, when flooding did occur and when the Earth was subjected to events cataclysmic enough to extinguish entirely the megafauna of the Ice Age. So there is the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis that provides an explanation of what happened during this period yeah. that resulted in such rapid environmental change. So can you explain this hypothesis? Yes. Um, the, the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis, YDIH for short, uh, is, uh, is not a lunatic fringe theory, as its opponents often attempt to write it off. Um, it's the work of more than 60 major scientists uh, working across many different disciplines, including archaeology uh, and, and including oceanography as well. Um, uh, and and uh, they are collectively puzzled by the sudden onset of the Younger Dryas and by the fact that it is accompanied 12,800 years ago by a distinct layer in the earth. Uh, you can see it most clearly at uh, Murray Springs in Arizona, for example. You can you can see it's about the width of a human hand, uh, and there's a, a draw there that's been cut by flash flooding at some time, and that draw has revealed the sides of the draw, and you can you can see the cross section, and in the cross section is this distinct dark layer that runs through the earth, and it contains evidence of wildfires. Fires. There's a lot of soot in it. Uh, there are also nano diamonds in it. There is shocked quartz in it. There is quartz that's been melted at temperatures in excess of 2,200 degrees centigrade. Um, there are carbon microspherules. All of these are proxies for some kind of cosmic impact. I talked a moment ago about the extinction of the dinosaurs. Lewis and Walter Alvarez, who, who made that incredible discovery, uh, initially their, their discovery was based entirely on impact proxies, just as the Younger Dryas is. There was no crater. And for a long time, they were disbelieved because they couldn't produce a crater. Uh, but when they finally did produce that deeply buried Chicxulub crater, that's when people started to say, yeah, they have to be right. But they weren't relying on the crater. They were relying on the impact proxies. And they're the same impact proxies that we find in what's called the Younger Dryas boundary layer all around the world. Um, so, so it's the fact that at the moment when the Earth tips into a radical climate shift, it, it, it's been warming up for at least 2,000 years before 12,800 years ago. People at the time must have been feeling a great sense of relief. You know, we've been living through this really cold time, but it's getting better. Things are getting better. And then suddenly around 12,800 years ago, some might say 12,860 years ago, there's a massive global plunge in global temperatures and, and the world suddenly gets as cold as it was at the peak of the Ice Age. And, and it, it's almost literally overnight. It's very, very, very rapid. Normally in an epoch when the Earth is going into a freeze, you would not expect sea levels to rise. But there is a sea level rise, a sudden one, right at the beginning of the Younger Dryas. And then you have this long frozen period from 12,800 to 11,600 years ago. And then equally dramatically and equally suddenly, the Younger Dryas comes to an end and the world very rapidly warms up and you have a, a recognized pulse of meltwater at that time as the last of the glaciers collapse into the sea uh, called Meltwater Pulse 1B, around about 11,600 years ago. So, so this is... Um, this is a period uh, which is very tightly defined. Uh, it's a period when we know that human populations were, were grievously disturbed. That's when the, the so-called Clovis culture of North America vanished entirely from the record uh, during the Younger Dryas. And it's the time when the mammoths and the saber-toothed tigers vanished from the record as well. Is there a good understanding of what happened geologically, whether there was an impact or not? Like what explains this? huge dip in temperature and then rise in temperature. The abrupt cessation of the global meridional overturning circulation of which the Gulf Stream is the best known part. Uh, the main theory that's been put forward up to now, and I don't dispute that theory at all, is that the sudden freeze was, because, was caused by the cutting off of the Gulf Stream, basically, uh, which is part of the central heating system of our planet. So no, no wonder it became c c cold. But what's not really been addressed before is why that happened, why the Gulf Stream was cut, why a sudden 
pulse of meltwater went into the world ocean and and it was so much of it and it was so cold that it actually stopped the gulf stream in its tracks and that's where the younger dryas impact hypothesis offers a very elegant and very satisfactory solution uh, to the problem now the hypothesis, of course, is broader than that. Uh, amongst the scientists working on it are, for example, Bill Napier, an astrophysicist and astronomer. Um, they have assembled a great deal of evidence which suggests that the culprit in the Younger Dryas impact event or events was what we now call the torrid meteor stream, uh, which the Earth still passes through twice a year. It's now about 30 million kilometers wide.